Hello, dear foodie friends, and welcome to Kitchen Chat. I'm your host, Margaret McSweeney, and I am just delighted to be in Carla Hall's kitchen. Thank you so much. You are oh. so welcome. You have been invited to come over at any time, but we finally made it happen. Absolutely, and what a fun celebration because today we are going to cook. I can't believe I'm in the kitchen with you and yes. going to learn how to cook some of the fabulous recipes from your new cookbook, mm -hmm. which is hot off the press. Hot off the presses. <laughs> you, There are only three people who have seen this book, well, on my side, and you were one of them. I just got this case today, so... I'm excited. I am so excited. And definitely I'm going to leave a link so you too can get a copy of Carla's cookbook. But if we, before we start cooking, mm -hmm. kind of to set the table, if mm -hmm. we might, soul food. Yeah. Tell me about, I mean, tell me, what exactly is soul food? I am so glad you asked that very simple question. And I think it is the diaspora of food that has come from West Africa mm -hmm. through the slave trade and people being in the South. And then this food that was created from black people mm -hmm. and, and then influencing American food. So you absolutely have to give credit that this is a cuisine just like French cuisine and Italian cuisine and Chinese and but soul food has been so narrowly defined, I think, up to mm. this point as all of these celebration foods like um, smothered pork chops or fried chicken or maybe barbecue, you know, uh, candied yams, macaroni and cheese, but it's so much more than that. And it comes from the soul. Yes. I mean, how, who named soul food soul food? I think the, the name came in the 60s, okay. so they were giving a name to it when it was the whole Black Power movement mm -hmm. and wanting to name our food. Yes. It was called soul food, and I think it simply is like the difference between a hymn and a Negro spiritual. Oh. So you can take the same food, and a lot of times people will want to lump soul food in with Southern food, but it's very different. When I get that, the difference between the spiritual and the hymn, but mm -hmm. all part of a very important um, food group and right. celebration. Right. And I am so excited that you are officially making soul food a cuisine because it should be. Uh -huh. And it has just, well, first of all, the cookbook is beautiful and the Thank recipes. You. And part of it, I'm sure, is going to be a taste of my childhood, growing up in Alabama, and yes. my dad cooking yes. and everything. So this will just take take me back to that. But you dedicated the book to George Hall. Yes. Can you tell us about George? So George Hall was my father, and um, I'll try to get through this without crying. Um, he passed away a couple years ago. But when we were doing the book, and I went through the South, um, to have a tour with my co-author Genevieve Ko and photographer Gabriela Stabile. We all got together and it was an impromptu photo shoot mm -hmm. and we went to Sweats and my dad was there and my mom and my brother and his, niece, and his kids and my aunt and my sister and it was so organic and impromptu but it was the last time that we would have been together and he's in the book. Yeah. So, everything about this book, and I know that you talk about Hugs from Heaven, and you talk about your dad and the connection to, to your podcast, um, everything about this book came about so easily and perfectly that I couldn't have even written it if I had tried to plan it. And, and so, it's very personal, and um, Daddy's a part of this. He is. He is. Mm -hmm. Oh, Carla. What was his favorite soul food? Um, Art soul food? My dad was the one who actually cooked more so than my mom at yes. home. And uh, even though they divorced at a very young age, when I was around seven, my mom would go and get food for my grandmother 
And she would also go and get food for my dad. So they would cook for my mom, and my mom would take it back home. So he loved making chow chow pickle. He loved doing um, greens and hot water cornbread. I think that um, for him, a big pot of beans, um, yeah, and probably he would do that smothered pork chop, but he would try to make it lighter. As he got older, he would try to make lighter food. This, mm -hmm. this is a celebration in your yeah. kitchen today. I am so excited to see which recipe that you'll be cooking and I'll yes. be <laughs> yes. watching along. And so everything. because the book is so new, I'll yes. have to see what page it's on. <laughs> um, we're going to do shrimp and grits, but um, not like people probably think of shrimp. I think mm. shrimp and grits, I think when people think of shrimp and grits, they think of something that is really heavy and saucy and fatty mm -hmm. but when I was talking to um, BJ Dennis and his mom who grew up off the coast of the Carolinas they said really what it takes to have shrimp and grits are really great grits and really great shrimp and you if you have those really wonderful ingredients yes. you want to pay so much respect to those ingredients that you don't want to clog it up with all of this fat and butter and cream. So um, we're going to make a very straightforward shrimp and grits recipe. So the one thing about this dish is that Ooh. you can see that it's so clean. Yes. And so when, when I think about African Americans and how we don't process, a lot of us are lactose intolerant. So why would it be that we would have a lot of milk and butter mm -hmm. and all of this in our grits? So we wouldn't naturally do that. Yes. So I kept the grits really clean. We have, um, we've made them with water and a bay leaf. Simple, simple, simple. And really great shrimp. And we're taking um, some things that I got at the market, which people would do. It's not about all this ham and bacon. And I, right. I know a lot of times you might find tasso in it. but. I got all these beautiful colored peppers here. There were some green tomatoes. I even have some corn that was at the market, and that can be part of our shrimp and grits. And then we just use the, the flavors that are coming from the shrimp in the sauce, and then the tomatoes, and that is gonna be the base of the, of the shrimp and over the grits. Are you taking just for, throughout the South? And is it only the South you're focusing on? Yes, I'm yes. focusing on pretty much the Southeast because that's pretty much where I grew up and where my family is from. But after finishing this book, I, I feel like I need to go out west to see how soul food changed going out west, how it's changed coming up north. And because there's so many stories out there that need to be told. You are on a soul food journey. I'm on a soul food journey. And I think that a lot of this has already been done with people like Jessica Harris. Mm -hmm. And you have Tanya Hopkins, who was the food historian that worked with me on the book. And you have um, yeah, uh, Michael Twitty, whose book has come out. And I really wanted to sort of take what I do, which is pop culture, quite yes. frankly, and take these food historians and sort of bring what they do into the light. So. I am only showing a spotlight of what all of these great food historians have done. Wow. Yeah. So more to be continued. Yes. <laughs> yes. On this. Well, this is just so special. We'll continue the chat and everything, but maybe let's start on the food. Let's cook. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Any tips for chopping onions? I think a really sharp knife. I, um, a lot of people are sensitive to onions, as am I. So a sharp knife is what you need because you're not going to be bruising and creating all those juices that get in your eyes. The other thing, it helps. I have glasses, so that also protects my eyes from the gases. So like the goggles, it really helps. <laughs> so we have our onions. And then um, since there was corn at the market, I thought we would take some corn and put in our shrimp and grits because all of that sweetness. So what do you think is the origin of shrimp and grits? What do you think inspired this original dish? I really think it was about what was available. I think that um, a lot of times you have this coastline full of food and so you got fresh fish and shrimp was one of those things and 
what are you going to have it with? What's cheap? Grits, corn, all of these ingredients that are very inexpensive. And rice, rice or grits was the base for all of these different stews. And of course you would put you know, the shrimp with it and whatever vegetables that you had. So today I've got green tomatoes, I have these peppers. I thought I, I've never done this with corn and it's not with corn in my cookbook, but I thought this would be great. And maybe just a little bit of spice. I have these beautiful spicy peppers and these little babies pack a punch. It's a little baby habanero and it's the size of a cherry pit. <laughs> so what happens if you bite into it? <laughs> we have to make sure we take that out before okay. we... <laughs> As a matter of fact, I'm not so sure this is a great application because look, you can't tell this from the corn. So it would be Russian roulette to try and put that in there. So maybe what I'll do is a larger pepper that I'm just going to slit and then take out. I love that Russian roulette. Yeah, with the Russian habanero. roulette. <laughs> um, so then I want to um, take these cherry tomatoes and these are going to be uh, the tomatoes that create the sauce because they are juicier than the green tomatoes. So I want to add these. Oh, Hold on. Sorry, I have a treat for you. <laughs> oh. Look. Oh, wow. I've made these. I'll tell you what they are. Like, actually, I'll tell you now. I went to the store. I got these, like, fruit little roll-up things. Well, they're not fruit roll-ups. It's like fruit and nut. Huh. These little things, and they're great snacks. And I said, what would they be like if they're in puff in um, pastry? Yeah. So I have fig and I have apricot. So we'll try that. I, I haven't tried it before. It's not in the cookbook. <laughs> it's just here right here and now with us right. so now that we have everything here we've got our peppers i have purple red and yellow i've got the green tomatoes i have um the red tomatoes the cherry tomatoes scallions corn i have some thyme and then i'm just gonna this is a um a ghost chili but i'm just going to do a little bit of this i don't want it to be too spicy but i think a little bit of spice is and nice what is a ghost chili hot hot <laughs> <laughs> it is fruity and hot well, that so sounds like a fun combination <laughs> yes so we're not going to do a lot of that i'm, I'm only going to use that much and then i'll make sure i don't wipe my eyes Oh, no. <laughs> so, so then now what we're going to do, now that we have everything ready, I wanted to get all of those components ready. We're going to cook our shrimp. And I got some jumbo shrimp. These are what you call U-tens. Mm -hmm. And so I've already peeled and deveined them. And you can just take a fork and just, do you want, do you want me to show that? Simply, I just have a fork. And I'm going to stick the fork right under the shell and just pull up like this. I've always been intimidated about taking it out of the shell. So now you just use a fork. I just use a so. fork. And then I have opened up the back. And so now I can devein it. Just pull all that yuckiness out. And that's it. This one was really, we got him at a time where he had just eaten. <laughs> yeah, sure did. Okay, and I'm going to keep the tail on. And if you are doing a lot of shrimp, you should keep your shells, and then that can become a stock or a part of a soup or, you know, it's flavor. So now I'm going to wash my hands. So I have the heat on like medium high, that's about high, and then I'm going to season the shrimp. And what are you seasoning it with? I'm seasoning it simply with kosher salt. That's it. Great. And I'm going to lay them in my pan. And I'm going to be careful because the shrimp have a little bit of moisture on them, so I don't want to splatter so just laying them gently i'm using a non-stick pan but you could you only because 
I would normally use cast iron, but because I'm cooking with tomatoes, I just didn't want to have that in the cast iron. And I love the simplicity of it's this. So simple. So the shrimp will start to curl. I'm going to turn it over. We're getting some nice color. And you don't want to overcook your shrimp. Whenever you're making seafood or fish or anything, it's just better to keep it really simple. Just don't overcook it. And you can see how it's curling up here. Yeah. And if you look at the shrimp, you see in here it's still raw. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to cook it all the way right now because I'm going to put it back into the sauce that we're going to make. So I'm going to take them out and set them aside. And when I come back in, so now we have this fat that's in here and now it tastes like shrimp. It has been seasoned and flavored with the shrimp. So I'm going to go in with some peppers. And I'm starting with the hardest ingredients that I have. I think I need a little bit more oil. And when you say the hardest ingredients, just... Versus the tomato. So okay. what I don't want to do is start with something that's going to be saucy so I can't sear okay. these peppers. Because if I start it with the tomatoes, then the juice would leach out, and then all of a sudden I would be sweating my peppers. But I want them to get a little bit of color, a little bit of char, and I'm going to add just a tiny bit of salt. But it's so colorful. And that's the thing, you know, just eating your colors and thinking of soul food as something that is fresh with lots of vegetables, because I think that's the thing that people don't realize. Soul food is an agrarian cuisine, or southern cuisine is an agrarian cuisine. People had vegetables, and they were planting vegetables, and they were using seasonal foods. So here we've got our peppers. And then I'm going to add some of the scallions. I'll save some for the top. Now I'm going in with my tomatoes. Oh, it's just like a fiesta in a pan. You know? I mean, wow. Some thyme. I'll go ahead and put in my garlic, which you don't want to put in first because you don't want it to burn because it will mess up your entire dish. So all of those flavors are coming together. I'm going to take my teeny bit of pepper, I mean, <laughs> teeny, teeny bit of spice, because I don't know how spicy this is. And this is the ghost pepper. <laughs> yes. And now what I'm going to do is add water. You don't need stock. You have all of these beautiful vegetables. So I'm going to cook this down, and all those tomatoes are breaking down, and now I'm making this beautiful sauce here. I'll taste it and see if I need to add more of anything. Need a little more salt. Okay, so that's spicy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's just a little bit. So now what I'm tasting of the garlic is coming through, the peppers, the thyme, do a little bit of black pepper. Try. And then I'm going to add the shrimp back in. So those are going to cook for, and whatever juice is on my plate, those are going to cook for a couple minutes. Mm -hmm. Make sure that it gets in there. I'm going to turn that down to a simmer. So, Carl, I, I'm having like a flashback of a type of gumbo. I mean, do, is mm -hmm. this, and it's that considered soul food? Gumbo is um, absolutely soul food from the Creole Coast. Yes. And gumbo was all about leftovers and what was available. And, you know, it would have some kind of seafood. It would have some kind of ham or chicken and vegetables, the Holy Trinity. And again, coming out of the tradition of using what you had. Mm-hmm. 
So we have this in here. Now what I'm going to do, which I've never done, is add corn. Wow. Yeah, and that is just going to simmer. We're going to finish cooking the shrimp. And if you need more liquid, you could add a little more liquid. So you'd have, again, something to soak up when you put it over the grits. I think we're looking good. And so I'm going to talk through the grits. Now, what I did here with the grits, I started with cold water. If you have stone ground grits, it'll be one part grits to four parts water. So that means one cup of grits, four cups of water. I added just a bay leaf into the grits. And then when you start them cold, they just naturally get creamy. And you don't have to add all of that butter and cream. And I'm going to take the bay leaf out. And they're just beautiful and creamy. Yes. No cream, no butter. That's it. And no cheese. Nope. Because I would always put cheese grits. <laughs> no up. cheese. Okay. No cheese. Yeah. No cheese. Just kidding. <laughs> you can add cheese if you want. You can add cheese if you want. It's your dish. But also I wouldn't add cheese because cheese and fish and seafood doesn't naturally go together. Yes. So now what we're going to do, I'm going to chop up some parsley and, and that's it. You can see how fast this was. It doesn't take any time. Yes. Yeah. Super fast. Yeah. So are you hungry? I am so hungry. Okay. Yes. All right. All right. So here we are. Carla, I am so excited. And you made this look so easy. It really is. With the simple ingredients, a true taste of soul food mm -hmm. is the simplicity. Mm -hmm. I love that. I am so excited, dear foodie friends, to be sitting in Carla's, on Carla's couch. Yes! Eating Carla's food from yes. Carla's kitchen. This is just going to be great. Well, bon appetit. Bon appetit. There have been so many times I'm sitting here watching television, sitting on my couch and eating. And... Mm. This is delicious. And the peppers? Right? It's just such, just such a symphony of simple ingredients mm -hmm. that you bring together. We could have used more spice. I could have used like half that pepper, that ghost pepper. That ghost pepper. <laughs> so one of the things that I want to mention as I'm looking at mm. this garlic here, and if you notice, I sliced the garlic yes. versus mincing it because it, it changes the taste. So you get a mm. much more mellow taste of the garlic when you slice it versus mincing. And there are times that you may want to mince. If you are mincing though, I suggest you use the microplane. Okay. Because it's like little knives. Yeah, so not the garlic press then. Oh God, no. Oh no, I've been doing no, it I'm just saying because, No, it's not that you've been doing it wrong. It just takes so long to clean out that garlic yeah, press as it does to actually use it. Okay. But I think that when you just want to have the aroma of garlic and then the garlic itself softens, you have a much different um, taste when you yes. slice it. Oh, mm -hmm. all these fabulous tips. Yeah. And also, everyone, the foodie friends can now see you on GMA. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us all about that? So I am the food contributor for GMA Day, which is at the, the third hour at 1 p.m. Mm -hmm. with Michael Strahan and Sarah Haynes. And it's been a blast. So I'm on once a week doing a cooking segment. How fun. Mm -hmm. And then I know, uh, speaking of ghost as a ghost peppers, you have something for Halloween coming up. Yes. So right now, the, everybody who knows me knows that I love the Halloween Baking Championship that's on the Food Network. I <laughs> love doing that show. We have so much fun. The host is John Henson. Yes. He is so funny. And the other two judges are Lorraine Pascal and Zach Young. And this is my fourth year doing it. And it is incredible. So do you have costumes already? Yes. Oh. Yeah, so I was Robin Hood. What's up in the hood? Robin with the W-H-O-D. No, H-O-O-D. OK, so that was a rap that I don't even remember now. But um, yeah, it's so much fun. Oh, that'll be great. And that's mm -hmm. airing? It airs on Monday nights. Oh, it airs at yeah. 9 on the Food Network. 
Okay. And it replays, I think, at midnight. So if you can't make, make it then, if you're taping something else. And just tune in, not only for the fun yeah. challenge, but to see your costumes. Oh, yeah. I it's all about like. the costumes. <laughs> I'm in makeup for three hours and becoming that character. Oh, yeah. that is going to be mm -hmm. great. Well, you always have so much on your plate. And you always just take so much time for others. And I'm so grateful. You have a heart for charity. Can you give us updates on what is near and dear to your heart mm -hmm. in terms of charity right now so one of the charities that I've been working with and that also helped inspire the book is um, Helen Keller internet Helen Keller International oh. and I went to Vietnam with the group and they do it ticks a lot of boxes for me so eyesight mm -hmm. uh, empowerment of women empowering groups around the world to uh, have sustainable practices in farming and um, these people who are remote and they're being taught how to feed their children healthy foods, but mm -hmm. by gardening. And it, it has been incredible. So the, the children, the pajama program, yes. and um, I'm on the, all these boards. And any, anyway, but another group that I just, that I just uh, learned about is I'll Have What She's Having. And it's an organization Ooh. in Houston um, a restaurateur started it to help women in the restaurant world get checkups and insurance because it's a problem. And I bought this, I, this auction item, this painting from Angela Fabry. And she said, can I have a phrase? And I was like, say yes, say yes. And then I have one word that's down here and it's adventure. So my six word novel, say yes, adventure follows, then growth. And so this is what um, this painting is about. I, I love that. A six word novel. Yeah. And how beautiful. I know. Oh, just oh, just gorgeous. Beautiful yeah. flowers. So you have that going on mm -hmm. and then you're going to be on a book tour. Yes. So how can the foodie friends find out where you are on tour? Foodie, 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 foodie friends. <laughs> you can go to my Facebook page and look at the events tab and all of my book tour stops are listed there. And, um, and then you can go to my website, carlahall.com, and um, lots of things happening there. So it's exciting. Yes, this is yeah. such an exciting time, and you are just involved in so many different things. It was great to see you at, well, almost see you at Chicago <laughs> Gourmet. I know. <laughs> we were there. <laughs> I love coming to Chicago. Yes. I love it. I hosted, I guest hosted um, Windy City Live mm -hmm. with Ryan when Val was on um, vacation, and so I was there for a week, and I went back for Chicago Gourmet. Yes. I'm going back for the Idea Show mm -hmm. in Chicago. So any chance I get to go to Chicago, I'm oh, there. And Chicago loves you. Thank Absolutely. you. I feel the love. <laughs> and for those foodie friends who are out there, no matter what age or stage they might be, what advice would you give to them? Not only you know tips for the home chef, which mm -hmm. we do um, on Kitchen Chat, but just tips from your heart for living life well. I think for me, my grandmother always said, it is your job to be happy, not to be rich. Yes. And so the thing that surprises people the most about me is that I don't set goals. Mm -hmm. I set an intention. And wow. the thing is, your intention is never yes. going to disappoint you. Goals will disappoint you because you may be looking to get to a place where you're not supposed to be. But if you have a clear intention, you're yes. always going to find that thing. I love this. I needed to hear that today too. Oh, Thank you. You're so lovely. I just, I just. You have so such a big heart, and I am so happy that you came to interview me, and that you just you wanted to come and cook and. So thank you. Oh, and thank you. Such a highlight, truly, of my culinary journey. Oh. Your friendship and your food, of course, your cookbooks. Make sure CarlaHall.com and follow her around. But thank you for all that you do to make the world a better place and a more delicious place. So thank you so much, Carla. And thank you, dear foodie friends, for joining me on this midlife culinary journey. I so appreciate your support with Kitchen Chat and continue to follow the fun kitchenchat.info. And always remember to take a moment and savor the day. Mm -hmm.